Hello. Indeed, we're heading to Texas to explore its farming and livestock practices. While it's true that the total value of agricultural products sold in Texas is less than half of that in California, it's important to note that each state has its unique agricultural strengths and specialties. Let's dive in and learn more about what makes Texas agriculture unique. But before we move forward, make sure you like the video. Click on the subscribe button. Or hit the notification bell. Indeed, while Texas has a larger number of farms compared to California, the total value of agricultural products sold in California is significantly higher. As of 2021, Texas has approximately 248,000 active farms, covering 77% of the state's land area, and generating an agricultural revenue of about $22.1 billion. In contrast, California, with only 69,000 active farms, manages to generate over $49 billion in revenue. In terms of agricultural products, Texas primarily produces livestock, cotton, milk, broilers, and corn. Livestock is the most profitable, contributing about $12.3 billion, which is nearly 50% of the state's total agricultural revenue. This highlights the diverse and dynamic nature of the agricultural sector across different states. We're currently visiting a cotton farm in San Patricio County, Texas. The harvest season for most Texas cotton farms typically runs from mid-October to December. During this period, billions of cotton balls are harvested and packed into round bales by these machines. As per USDA statistics from 2021, Texas dedicates about 5.3 million acres of farmland to cotton cultivation, which accounts for 43% of the country's total cotton area. Other states with significant cotton cultivation areas include Georgia, Mississippi, and Arkansas. By the end of 2021, Texas was home to approximately 7,950 active cotton farms, producing a cotton harvest of 7.7 .7 million bales, with each bale weighing about 480 pounds. Post-harvest, these billions of bales are loaded onto trucks and transported to cotton processing factories. The cotton industry in Texas generates an average annual revenue of about $1.7 billion, making cotton the state's largest agricultural crop. In recent years, China has consistently been the world's largest cotton producer, yielding about 5.9 million tons. India follows in second place with 5.3 million tons, and the United States produces 3.8 million tons. In addition to cotton production, Texas is also renowned for its large-scale livestock farming. We're currently visiting a goat farm in Hill County, Texas, which is home to over 600 Spanish-origin goats. Every morning, these goats are led to a nearby pasture for free-range feeding and movement, restricted to a radius of 1.2 miles around the farm. As per 2021 USDA statistics, Texas houses approximately 943,000 goats across over 1,300 different farms, some of which also raise sheep. The majority of these goats are reared for meat production, contributing to 53% of the nation's goat meat output. Goat milk, on the other hand, is primarily produced in California. Goats reach full maturity at 18 months of age, at which point they typically weigh between 110 and 120 pounds. An adult goat's daily diet consists of food equivalent to 4% of its body weight, 80% of which is grass. In the late afternoon, the goats are herded back into stables or protected areas to safeguard them from predators. It's estimated that predators such as coyotes and wildcats kill about 1,100 goats in Texas each year. Additionally, goat meat factories in the state slaughter approximately 630,000 goats annually. When discussing Texan farms, it's impossible to overlook the large-scale cattle farms that house thousands of animals. We're now transitioning from cattle ranches to vegetable fields in Texas to observe the process of harvesting millions of tons of vegetables. The video showcases the harvesting of asparagus in a field in southern Texas. The harvest season typically spans from the end of May to the beginning of June, attracting thousands of migrant workers to Texas's asparagus farms. Annually, the United States dedicates about 25,000 acres of land to asparagus cultivation, generating a value of approximately $98 million. Once harvested, the asparagus is placed in plastic trays and transported to packing factories. In addition to asparagus, cilantro is another commonly grown vegetable in the fields of eastern Texas. 
The harvest season for cilantro runs from April to September, during which hundreds of workers from Mexico gather in Texas's cilantro fields. Each year, about 150 to 180 acres of farmland are used for cilantro cultivation, which is significantly less than the 4,000 acres utilized in California. The cilantro in these fields is cut and bundled into small bundles by dozens of workers before being packed and shipped to vegetable stores. We're currently at a lettuce farm in Houston, Texas. In 2021, about 119,000 acres of land in the United States were dedicated to lettuce cultivation. California accounted for 71% of the country's lettuce growing area, while Texas contributed about 3,700 acres. Millions of lettuce plants are harvested and packaged directly in the field before being distributed to shops and supermarkets. It's estimated that the average American consumes about 12.7 pounds of lettuce per year. As for your question about my lettuce consumption, as an AI, I don't eat, so I don't consume lettuce or any other food. Now, let's continue our journey to explore the farms of the United States and discover the fascinating process of harvesting various crops. I'm sure some of the agricultural products harvested will indeed surprise you. Our first stop in this video is an olive farm located in the San Joaquin Valley of California. Unlike European farms, where olives are typically harvested using machinery, here in California, billions of olives are hand-picked by workers, many of whom are from Mexico. Currently, California is home to 682 olive farms, spanning approximately 39,000 acres. Of these, about 220 farms still employ manual harvesting methods. A worker can typically harvest two olive trees per day, earning an average daily wage of about $95. Once harvested, the olives are placed into plastic trays. They are then stored in a refrigerator before being transported to an olive oil factory for processing. According to the California Olive Commission, the state harvested and processed 116 million pounds of olives last year, accounting for 75% of the country's total olive production. We're now visiting a blueberry farm in Whatcom County, Washington. Every year, starting from the beginning of May, approximately 7,000 workers gather at blueberry farms in Washington for the harvest season. These workers hand-pick ripe blueberries and place them in plastic containers worn across their chests. In the United States, blueberries are cultivated on about 103,000 acres of farmland, with Washington being the state with the largest area dedicated to blueberry cultivation. According to 2021 USDA statistics, the United States produced 681 million pounds of blueberries, with Washington contributing 163 million pounds to this total. A harvest worker at these farms typically picks between 9 to 12 boxes of blueberries each day, earning about $9 per box. This highlights the significant role of manual labor in the cultivation and harvesting of blueberries in Washington. We're now at a strawberry farm in California where workers from Mexico and Guatemala are busy preparing millions of strawberry roots for planting. These roots, shipped from a nursery, are neatly arranged and boxed by the workers. Not only do these roots serve the growing process on farms in California, but they are also sold to strawberry farms in other states such as Florida and Washington. Currently, California dedicates around 35,000 acres of land for strawberry cultivation, producing 1.1 billion pounds annually. This accounts for 83% of the nation's strawberry production. Switching gears to raisin production, California uses 147,000 acres of land for growing grapes for raisins, which is 23% of the state's grape growing area. After the grape harvest, billions of grapes are dried on the farm for three weeks before being transferred to the processing plant. After three weeks, these grapes have dried up and are then sent to the factory for cleaning. As for your question about California raisins, as an AI, I don't eat, so I haven't consumed California raisins or any other food. However, I can tell you that California raisins are enjoyed by many people around the world. Thank you for joining this agricultural journey.